This is the second episode of Advanced Calisthenics Skills, and I am going to show you how to unlock the front lever. The front lever is a skill that requires great demand on horizontal pulling strength with straight arms, as well as a decent amount of core strength to keep yourself stacked. The front lever is a skill that also requires great dedication as the front lever is not to be messed with, as it will reward you with advanced strength in the long run to absolutely dominate the pulling game. I'm going to get you through the technique, progressions, and exercises you can do to improve your front lever. So, once you are warmed up and prepared, let's get into the requirements. When it comes to the requirements, having to be able to pull up 60% of your body weight in the weighted pull up should be good. And also, having a good base of calisthenic strength from one and a half to three years of training basics would give you a great starting position. Also, since the front lever is a horizontal pulling movement, having a good base of body weight rows should be good. Having a good base of basics in calisthenics will not only be able to prevent injuries, but also give you the opportunity to get stronger. If you have those requirements down, then here I go into telling you more about the skill as for the technique I am about to tell you. The main driver to hold the skill happens within the scapula. Maintain retraction along with depression to hold the skill with maximum efficiency. Also, maintain external rotation with your arms and never, and I say never forget to straighten your arms as this is a straight arm movement. Have whichever grip width is suitable for you, whether it's a bit closer or just shorter width or a bit wider, it's really up to you. But what's really important is your head position. Always be either looking towards your feet or at the ceiling and never, and I say never, never, never look overhead. When it comes to your hips and core, your hips have to be maintained in hip extension. And your core is, of course, have to be flexed to maintain that straight line that we desire. Legs are straight, and if you'd like, if it's your style or not, toes pointed. Some mistakes that you may come across are many. Do avoid these. Having not engagement in the scapula is one of which that I myself had trouble with. When I was first learning the front lever, yes, I was retracting and depressing and doing all that shit, but I did not have enough. And specifically, I did not have enough depression. When you are depressing, it will boost your retraction even more by engaging your lats. So if you want to be the most depressed person possible to sacrifice for that front lever, do it with maximum retraction as well. Another mistake is having a pike at the hips. When you have a pike at the hips, you look like you are showing your ass to the ground instead of having that perfect straight line and having the most beautiful front lever in the world. If you do have that huge pike, then that probably means you are rushing your progression and you need to slow down. This typically happens when your brain goes into complete monkey mode and you are throwing stones at yourself from the inside and you think that you achieve a front lever in just three weeks. And then once you do your front lever, you know, with that awful, awful pike, you're presented with the worst form imaginable. Slow down! Work on one progression at a time, which I'll show you all of them in this video. It doesn't always mean that though. When you have worked hard and consistently, for a long period of time for that front lever and you still have that like tiny bit of a pike in the hips it could also be a mobility problem in your hip flexors which i'll show you a stretch that you can do later in this video but not now you gotta watch the whole video through and also because there's another mistake that people make that you need to know so that you don't do it yourself and that is not straightening your elbows this typically happens when you don't have enough strength in your triceps. As if you have that tricep strength, you'll be able to lock your elbows much, much easier. This could also be a scapula problem, as your scapula does not have enough strength 
to support your whole entire body weight so you are using your biceps more so you don't lock out your elbows and just you know making it easier which we don't want we have to make it harder so it looks more appealing now that i am done talking about the technique let's get on with the progressions which the first progression is going to be the tuck front lever but not the regular old tuck front lever they are show on the screen <laughs> You thought, you goofy ass. Instead, to make it more ideal to the full front lever, extend your hips to the point where they are parallel towards your shoulders. Once you are able to progress from 5 seconds, then to 7, then to 10 seconds, that is when you can move on to the next progression, which is going to be the advanced tuck, which all you have to do to move on to the progression is extend at the knees so that your legs are at a 90 degree angle. and don't forget to keep your hips in a posterior pelvic tilt to keep your core nice and engaged. From here, you will notice that the angle at which your hands and shoulders are from the bar is getting farther. This is completely normal as you are going through the process of extending your lever over time, which makes this movement even harder. And then once again, you can move on to 3, then to 5, then to 10 seconds. And you can repeat the cycle from progression to progression as you are moving on. The frog. In this one, open your groin and bring your knees a little bit forward. This is the progression to work towards the next, which will be the half life straddle. Where in this one, your hips are at anti-extension. Where at first when you do it, you might feel a bit, just like a bit of a cramp in your glutes. You may have like a bit of excruciating pain, but that's okay. You can work around that because the reverse hyperextension is here to save you. Start with your hip crease on the edge of a bench or a ledge, and while it's having posterior pelvic tilt, bring your knees up in kind of like a halfway position and hold it for about a second or two. You may still feel a cramp in that one position, but over time, you'll be able to have better mobility and you won't have that cramp no more. Then, once you can hold that for a required time, you can move on to the straddle which is the second to last gateway to the last progression, which is the forefront lever. If you have really good anti-extension at the hips in the half lay, you should be able to have really good hip extension in the straddle. So make sure you have perfect form before you move on to the next progression, which is going to be the half lay, but instead your legs are together. Which for this one, you may feel a cramp in the hamstrings this time, but you can always just do a reverse hyperextension, but instead with your legs together and in a half lay. And you can also do this hip flexor stretch to increase your mobility even more. Make sure in that stretch, you keep your hips in a posterior pelvic tilt. So keep them tucked. Now from here, you can shoot your shot and go for the full front lever. But before that, make sure that you can hold the halfway comfortably for 10 seconds as always patience is key now that you are fully aware that you cannot achieve a front lever in three hours let's move on to the exercises that will improve your front lever front lever pull-ups start on a front lever progression that you can do a row with and then whilst keeping yourself nice and parallel throughout the whole way through Pull up explosively with a proud retraction and depression and go down with a slow negative. Not only will this also improve your touch, but also your overall front lever gains. Be super supportive. Do a rep range that is between 3 and 5 and 4 to 5 sets as well. As this movement is especially very demanding in the top portion. And it's very difficult. That's why you should start it in an L progression first. And if you still can't do that, try using a resistance band to make it easier. And then once you are moving on from progression towards progression to make this movement even harder, you can go into advanced tuck, then halfway shadow, and then so on and so on. The second exercise I will show you is the arch raise. Retraction is really, really important in the front lever. So this exercise will target that the most. And it is very good for injury prevention as well. Start this in a dead hang and bring your feet back towards you and your knees back in kind of a half place straddle sort of thing. And then from here, externally rotate your knees so that your glutes are engaged for back protection. And then arch your back. 
once you are in that start position, first depress and then retract and externally rotate your elbows as you are raising up with straight arms. Do these for about three to five reps and three to five sets as usual. When it comes to recovery, it is especially very heavily crucial when you are doing a movement for a long period of time. That is why I encourage recovery for everything, no matter what it is, so that you can prevent injuries long term. So, train this movement for about two times a week max. And have your rest times in between sets of exercises be three to five minutes long so that your muscles are nice and recovered between your sets. Well, I mean, sorta, but it's better than two minutes at least. Also, please, for the love of God, warm up. If you don't even warm up right now and you're right now going to like plan to start training for the front lever, you are going to be in a wild ride for Snap City. Also, properly stretch after you work out. You'll need it. If you want a video about a warm-up or a cool-down, let me know in that comment section. And also, if you want to see more content like this in general, you should might as well like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends and family. Now, this will be it for the tutorial. So, this is Sassman talking to you in this square box, and I will see you next Thursday. Thank you for watching.